WBNE. Hello, and welcome to episode 58, all about Mount Doom. Chapter 3, Book 6, Return of the King, being the 58th part of That's What I'm Talking About. My name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. And today I'm joined once again by Cassandra and Norman of Lord of the Rings Minute. Welcome back, guys. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I was just saying that, um, or before we like officially started the episode, I had a feeling things would be happening this this chapter and i wanted to have some fun people on that i knew i've had a good time with before and and it and it, it paid off so <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're you're officially um, ahead of us in the story now right where we've been where our episodes are released so far whoa really yeah, yeah. yo that's crazy that's crazy so you might you might finish the book before we finish the movie and if that is the case we need to have you on so you can like watch like five minutes of the movie out of context because (laughs) oh maybe yeah oh my gosh (laughs) i'm sad i'm sad based on all the reactions i watched while uh on the instagram that we didn't have you for anything with denethor oh my god oh my gosh (laughs) he's just Oh my god, what a great piece of work that character is. Oh <laughs> my god. The craziest old man in a story full of a crazy, crazy old, old men. Man. Yes. Oh, very perfect description. Like perfect <laughs> way to describe him. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so where are you guys in your or for listeners who um don't know about uh their podcast, they do a cover cover the Lord of the Rings movies minute by minute. So where are you guys now? Um, we are in the middle of uh, Pelennor Fields right now. Okay. All right. All right. So my home girl's about to come in and save the day. Yeah. yeah. Like literally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when we're recording this, the the week with Eowyn versus the Witch King is next week. Yeah. Oh wow. So that's awesome. That's awesome. It's so crazy for me now that I'm at a point. I'm I'm like at a point now with my read through of this where I'm like I know what's already happened. Like I I can I can tell what is going to happen next in like in some pe- in some people's um like rewatching or or whatever of Lord of the Rings that I'm like I I I know things. This is amazing. <laughs> right we virtually can't spoil you now well i don't know there's still i don't know i mean like i said i i can't remember if we had like already started the episode there or not are a but few like things there are a few things there i few don't things. really care what happens after these chapters <laughs> you know i'm like i don't care i know that at some point aragorn and arwen not yeah no yeah yes. aragorn and arwen get married and and that's all i know and i'm assuming everyone <laughs> lives I will be surprised if, like, we turn the page after this chapter and it's like, and there they were, mourning Aragorn's death. So. <laughs> Just kidding. Legolas dies. You know, oh my gosh. <laughs> don't you put that evil on me. Are you kidding me? Don't the even. The are too late for Frodo and Sam. No, no. How dare you? Don't oh even my God. speak that into the universe. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I don't even care, really, what happens to Sam and Frodo. I'm like... <laughs> They did it, y'all. It's over. So I guess, yeah, spoiler alert, everyone listening. The ring, is, ding dong, the ring is dead. It's <laughs> it's destroyed. And I am just filled with such a, like, boundless energy right now because I know, I know how it happens. It's so funny because the last time we were on, I know you were just like, ugh, we have, like, all these Frodo and Sam chapters left. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, because you guys came on. That's right, you guys came on for like the mid, as I've been calling them, the mid season finale for Two Towers. Yeah. So I had like just finished all the amazing chapters with with Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli and Treebeard and Gandalf. Like it's all great stuff, and then the last half of Two Towers is just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and- Aww. <laughs> definitely not as fun it's very sloggy yeah so like it's just a lot (laughs) yeah yeah but oh my god it's here so chapter three book six of return of the king mount doom as i predicted um let's see 
probably 13 weeks ago now when I saw the table of contents for this book. And I saw there was a chapter titled Mount Doom, followed by like two chapters later, something called like many partings. I'm like, okay, I'm assuming in the Mount Doom chapter is when it happens. So you were right. not, yeah, yeah. I was like, I I was really surprised that my prediction for the the structure of the story in Return of the King, or at least like the last half or so of Return of the King has so far been been pretty dead on. But I was concerned in this chapter that it wasn't going to happen. There was a part of me that I was like, <laughs> it's I was like, I have to believe I have to believe it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But they just like kept walking. And it just kept getting more and more like desperate and mm-hmm. not good. And I was like, oh, it's it's not going to happen in this chapter. They're going to get there and then something is bad is going to be already be there and they're not going to do it in this chapter. So, oh, my God. OK, so I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm going to be all over the place because like I it's just really weird for me that like I started this. So the other thing is that as we are recording this, this is the week of my like one year anniversary of the show. Oh, so awesome. Oh, congrats. Thank you. It's it's just, it's so weird that like a year ago, I barely even knew who these people were. And mm-hmm. then now here I am. And I know how the, I know how the like main story of this quest ends. You know, mm-hmm. I know how it happens now. And it's something that like, I've worked so hard to not accidentally find out. And <laughs> I got to experience it firsthand and i was surprised we will get there when we get there but like it's a really weird surreal experience it's like it's like reading the harry potter books for the first time as they Mm -hmm. were being released and and then like voldemort dies and you're like oh my god it's happened like right we've we've waited voldemort dies oh my gosh (laughs) like We've waited all... See, that was the thing, is that, like, when I read the books, I read them after they had already all been published, and I'd already seen some of the movies before I even picked up the books. So, like, I already knew, I you know, I was like, yeah, Voldemort dies, obviously. There was no doubt in my mind that that was going to happen, but, like, mm-hmm. I imagine, me, like... This feeling that I have now with like, oh my god, they destroyed the ring is very similar to people reading Deathly Hollows like the week it came out and, and being like, oh, it happened. Yeah. Like, uh, you mean like the tw- like the 24 hours after it came out? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> well, just that catharsis. That you just like to the end of the journey, laying right? in bed like, oh my god, it's done. <laughs> I did actually, when I did eventually read the books and I finished Deathly Hollows, I was it was like I don't know it was like midnight and I was like oh I have like five more chapters or something left I can finish this tonight but in Deathly Hallows when you get to the end (laughs) five chapters is like 200 pages basically Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I was reading through the morning and my sister got up for her like 4 30 a.m swim team lesson and she had like already she had like gotten up and gotten ready and left the house and i was still reading it and finishing it and then finally at like 6 30 the sun was rising as i was finishing like the epilogue and i was like oh my god what now (laughs) i was like i don't just go to sleep after this i i was like do i get up and start my day now like what right What's going With the on? the knowledge that everything is, I guess, all right in the world of Harry Potter. <laughs> I know, right? So... It isn't any longer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> That's a understatement. <laughs> you either die a hero. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. <laughs> exactly. And this is why every day I'm thankful that J.R.R. Tolkien is dead. Oh my God, same. Yeah. You know, like... I just, I feel so bad for our friends over on Harry Potter Minute because they've been on hiatus for like the past year and then all of this stuff happened and I was like, oof, nice, like happy trails to you guys. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Gonna navigate this for a while. Yeah. Oh man, it's so rough because like the fandom of Harry Potter is such a like diverse, open, welcoming, loving fandom. Right. And then like you just have a terrible creator. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah. 
I guess I guess it's like the equivalent of growing up and you're gay, but your parents are really transphobic and homophobic. And you're like, okay, I guess I'll just wait until I'm independent and on my own. And then you go out into the world and you and then you end up like hosting your own pride parade, basically, and thriving. Mm -hmm. And then when people are like, oh, but what about your parents? You're like, who? I don't I don't know. (laughs) I don't know them. (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't know who those people are. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So thankful J.R.R. Tolkien is dead. He's not on Twitter. Um, <laughs> count your blessings every day, folks. Every day. Um, okay. So let's start this chapter discussion. Oh, man. What did I write? Yeah. So my first my first note was this better be when it happens. <laughs> I was just like, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Oh, also, um, while I was reading this chapter, I recorded, I did a recording on my phone just to get all of my reactions because I was like, if it happens in this chapter, I'm going to want to put that. So so every now and then I'll insert clips of like my reactions to different stuff while I was reading the chapter for the first time. Okay, here it is. We're on chapter three, book six, Return of the King. Mount Doom. Now, it is my prediction that this is the chapter when we destroy the ring. I might lose my mind if that doesn't happen. Okay, without further ado, let's do it. So yeah, it starts off very grim and terrible and depressing. (laughs) I think that this is uh, some really good description. I think it's really tedious. I I mean, I disagree. I think it's really, I think it's really effective. (laughs) Yeah, I would also say it's really effective because I definitely, the entire chapter, I was, like, very anxious and very, like, nervous about, like, and also feel it, like, very, dr- felt like very, I felt, like, the dread and the weight hanging mm-hmm. over them and everything as they were, like, on this, on this trip by themselves, basically. And also, like, and, like, to a point, basically, it's, it's, like, just Sam and because Frodo yep. is just, like, a shell of a person now. Yeah. Yep. So it's zombie Frodo. <laughs> yeah. Along. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Frodo. Poor bud. Poor bud. He's having a hard time. They uh where the previous chapter ended, they had just escaped, like blending in with this army of orcs, which I just I still think is hilarious that that somehow worked. Um Right, they're so much smaller than orcs. I know, I know. And like, I think it mentioned that the army that they were blending in with was one of the smaller breeds, but I still refuse to believe. I mean, you know, obviously I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know if they actually do have like a smaller breed that's about the size of the hobbits, but like. It is just as silly as you think it is. Okay, good. (laughs) Perfect. Especially in the animated. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's right. Every now and then I I forget that like the animated version exists. And then when someone reminds me of it again, I get really excited. But only kind of exists. (laughs) Because it's two different companies, three movies, and a different company made the one in the middle. No, I love it. Are you kidding me? That kind of chaotic energy I live for. (laughs) It gives us such wonderful things as Boromir without pants. Well, I mean... There's only two, technically, for Lord of the Rings. That's true. Because you haven't read The Hobbit yet, right? No, I have not read The Hobbit yet. Oh my god. I can't imagine. Uh. I know, which is so... It's just... It just makes me laugh, like, laugh to myself so much that, like, the thing that Tolkien wrote first was The Hobbit. This, like, oh, fun little kid's bedtime story. Great. And then they're like, hey, buddy, do you have, like, another book in you, maybe? And he's like, well, actually... <laughs> And then, like, just word vomits a thousand pages, probably, like, two thousand pages. And they somehow convinced him to, like, edit it down to a thousand. Right. And he's like, actually, I still have this entire other universe in my head with more complicated history in it. So. I mean, what what section of this damn near a million words to justify the languages I made up would you like to read? <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> he's like, well, I'm glad you asked. Just the idea that if no one had had asked him, he like it just never would have happened. I don't know. Maybe it would have happened. I don't know. But like this idea that like all of this stuff was just like rattling around in his head Mm -hmm. still. I I think there's an interview with Christopher Tolkien uh, where he says he says something like the only reason The Hobbit became a book is because he was constantly correcting his father about the bedtime story. 
to keep the details straight, so Tolkien started writing it down. <laughs> oh, classic. Classic. I would be so annoyed if I was, like, telling a story and <laughs> someone kept interrupting me and was like, last time you said the door was blue. And I'm like, well, this time it's green, okay? It's a magic changing door, all right? And we're all just gonna be happy with that. Like, right? It's a magical world filled with halflings and dragons and treasure and wizards. Why can't the door be blue one day and green the other? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. also just the fact that like it literally is an entirely magical world. And then Christopher would be like, um, but last time it was blue. Like, that's the thing (laughs) that he's like pointing out the flaw in. So, um, But yeah, yeah. So this one, right. So right here in the story where we are now is just like terrible and bleak and awful and hopeless. They like barely, Frodo has like barely any energy in him to live at this point. Um, And where is it? Yeah. And then like Sam is also really beginning to lose hope too um, because he realizes that like We have barely enough food and water to get us there. We have none to get us back. There's no way that we're going to go back. Mm -hmm. He, He thinks, and when the task was done, there they would come to an end. Alone, houseless, foodless, in the midst of a terrible desert, there could be no return. So it's just like a... A nice bleak way to kick things off, you know? Like, well, this is this is where we die. Let's onward. Let's have go. You, have you talked about um like the 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 gay subtext in this because uh the the, the a, a couple instances in the whole this time chapter. I was reading this chapter and Norman can attest to it, every time I was just like, Oh, that's gay. Like just out loud. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, the the line immediately after what you had just read, like, um, so that was the job I felt I had to do when I started, thought Sam, to help Mr. Frodo to the last step and then die with him. Well, if that is the job, then I must do it. And I'm like, oh, they love each other so much. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, there, yeah, I haven't, um, like, fully delved, is that the right past tense form of that? word i don't know doved delved whatever i haven't like fully gone into that into those themes yet but i imagine that i will at some point in the future Mm -hmm. because my my idea for like where this podcast will go when i'm done with like some of the main things like the books like the hobbit and the movies and whatnot is i'll have like special episodes about you know, this time, ta- this episode, we're going to talk about the music and the movies and stuff like that. So, oh, bless, that's awesome. So, I'm sure that there will be a an episode dedicated to probably to like a Pride Month coming to a you know to a calendar near you or whatever. You know, like <laughs> right. probably like next June. I bet I'll have like a. What would be really cool is if I got like a like queer Scott like studies like scholarly. PhD yeah. person, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. someone who like is actually who actually like studies this kind of stuff and and can come in with like a lot of really cool, you know, research and and in-depth knowledge and whatnot yeah. to to talk about these themes. Cuz it's de- cuz it's they're you're right. They're like definitely there. It's definitely I just I don't know. I just laugh to myself every now and then because when things like that happen where it's Sam being like Saying like, well, this is my life's purpose is to come with mm-hmm. Frodo and die or with him. Or being really physically affectionate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the back of my head is always that vine going, two dudes yeah. chilling in a hot tub <laughs> five feet apart because they're not gay. <laughs> I don't know. Like, oh, man. And then also the like, the vines that are like, just dudes being bros. Right? Just, yeah. What's, what's better than better this? Than this? <laughs> Just guys being dudes, <laughs> like <laughs> so, like yeah, it's 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 all definitely there, a hundred percent. Actually, I want to. Who was it? Someone tagged me who tweeted and was like, "Let me find it." Molly Knox Oster tag. Let's see. Yeah, she's a she's a writer and a comic artist, I believe. Okay, cool. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, she um was going on this Twitter thread about, I guess, yeah, like, 
queer themes in Lord of the Rings. And, yeah. And then at the end of it was like, can someone please have me on their podcast to talk about queer themes in Lord of the yeah. Rings? And I replied and I was like, I mean, I'm not there yet, but like, you're welcome to come on and I'm sure we can work it into the conversation anyway, much like we are now. <laughs> um, yeah, I wrote it down twice just in my in my notes. Gay stuff, more gay stuff. Well, I mean, like, even if it, even if you read it as like platonic, like purely platonic, it's obviously not like, toxic masculine like it's no. cool. like they're, yeah they're, they're not afraid to like kiss each other it's exactly fine. yeah exactly like, that's he kisses, he kisses frodo's hands in this chapter yeah. more than once yeah oh yeah they all like love touching on each other which like <laughs> you know in in my we i don't know if you if you guys or any people listening right now can also relate to this but like right now in our corona times whenever i'm watching a movie or a tv show or something and like people touch i'm like what you can't you can't do that yeah that's <laughs> I'm not like, allowed. what are they doing <laughs> yeah um in particular was in this when like quarantine and everything really kicked off uh i started watching great british baking show mm-hmm. and like all the time they would be like putting their bare hands all over the foot like i remember one time someone's like ice cream like dome was melting and she was trying to like she was like shaping it the melting ice cream with her hands and rubbing her hands like all over this ice cream cake thing and i'm like stop doing that (laughs) (laughs) so like anytime they're like he kissed him on the forehead and felt his like sweaty hair and i'm like ugh, no (laughs) go wash your hands Six feet apart. <laughs> Germs live there. No. You're in the dirtiest part of Middle Earth. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Oh, my gosh. So uh, I really hope, like, eventually that part of my brain will be able to shut off <laughs> and I can, like, finally watch things and not be like, oh, my God, coronavirus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, I think because I've come across, I've come across, like, two kinds of people. There are two kinds of people in the world. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, where <laughs> one type of reader will be like uh they are not gay they're just friends like why does and like i don't necessarily know if that comes from a place of homophobia i don't know if that comes from a place of like wanting to just be wanting to like stick to the original intent of the text you know Mm -hmm. and and take things as they are and then there are also you know readers who are like oh yeah no you would be you would have to like be really oblivious to read this and not immediately think it's a little bit gay, you know? <laughs> like, right. yeah. that being said, though, there, I, there's immense values to both of those kinds of reads of this mm-hmm. work because in the first one where you're like, no, they're not gay, it's because I think, um, I think there's also, like, a kind of a troubling part of our society that like as soon as we see two characters in a movie who are the same gender and they like especially who are guys and they like hug everyone's like oh my god they're secretly gay they're together and it's like why can't we just have them be friends and have this be a promoting that like hey guys it's okay to hug your friends Mm -hmm. and tell them that you love them and like and be like good friends with each other and everything because that's a kind of you know that's contributing to like you were saying toxic masculinity and whatnot Mm -hmm. and like it's okay to be vulnerable with your best guy friends and whatnot and and like you can hug each other and I guess kiss each other's hands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there's a platonic way to do that, but <laughs> there's no heterosexual you know? explanation for this. So like exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like um the first thing that comes to mind whenever I hear that is in high school musical two, at the end of I Don't Dance, when Chad and Ryan have switched outfits. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and there's no... <laughs> it was before your time. It's okay. After my time? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There's a scene where they are... Let's see. Ryan, who is kind of coded as being gay, but can't actually be gay because it was a Disney movie in the 2000s. He, like, is trying to recruit a bunch of these dude bros to be in a, like, showcase or whatever. And Chad, who is the bro dude, 
if you can imagine from the name <laughs> Chad. Course. Yeah. The name is Chad. <laughs> <laughs> um he go he's like, I don't dance. Come on. I don't dance. I know you can't. Not a chance. No. And then they do an entire dance number. They're on like they're playing like a game of baseball. And it's like weirdly homoerotic and <laughs> <laughs> and like there's definitely a lot of sexual tension in the it's a great number. Descended directly <laughs> from the volleyball scene in Top Gun. Oh dude, absolutely. Oh my gosh. And then once once the scene is over, it cuts to everyone like sitting at a picnic table, and the two guys who were originally like having this weird sexual tension and like going back and forth in the song, they are now wearing each other's clothes. <laughs> and it's so weird. Well, There's... I think the intent's pretty clear there. <laughs> there is zero, as Cassandra said, there is zero heterosexual explanation for that like just absolutely none so i think i think both readings of the text are valid because like, yes yeah that was my point yeah, yeah no <laughs> but i am i'm solidly in the second camp i'm sorry yeah and like that oh no yeah that's like that being said obviously anyone can read however you know read a book watch a movie however which way you're going to interpret it and like that's what makes that's what makes this podcast for me really interesting is because i get to hear a plethora of people's perspectives and how and like their read on it Mm -hmm. um and i get to see how certain lines mean a lot to some people and then other people like completely missed it or something so and that and that's how you can tell when a when a book like lord of the rings has such a lasting effect that like people to this day can still have you know different interpretations and and reads of stuff Mm -hmm. but yeah they're both yeah they're both extremely valid because one is contributing to being like no this is how you can still be a manly man and destroy the well i wouldn't say frodo's manly i take that back but uh but sam is a guy that works with his hands He's, you know, he's coded as just an average person. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say. And then he so. does some of the most heroic stuff in the story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and then, the, oh, and then there's also, there's a great, I, I'm, I'm like really now in the camp of like, man, Aragorn's pretty cool, guys. <laughs> like, what a, what a cool character. Just you wait until you watch the movie. <laughs> Where in... The first half of Return of the King, he, you know, he's the king. He's this big manly hero who comes in and saves the day and is really good at fighting and everything. But there's a whole chapter where he's healing people. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's not something that you typically see men doing. And, like, that's just awesome to see these, like, different complicated reads of, like, what it means to, to be a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Meanwhile, of course, there's, you know, three women in the books right but, hmm. in total I know, that, whatever that is something that i appreciate about the movies is, is that that like soft like that softer um masculinity transfers over really well in the interactions with like the actors and stuff yeah um so that's yeah well that's, that's good to hear especially yeah. the hunting trio oh my god <laughs> what, that. who's that air what aragorn gimli and legolas yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're silly. i love them oh my god i love them <laughs> They're my favorites. Oh, my God. I love them. (laughs) I've also just, like, I've come to the conclusion, imagine this, that um, I came to this conclusion in the book that's titled Return of the King, that this is actually a story about Aragorn, and... (laughs) (laughs) But, like, the entirety of Lord of the Rings. It's not about Frodo. It's not about the ring. It's not about Sam. It's about Aragorn, you know? (laughs) This is his story. <laughs> it's his Aragorn, time to shine. And when does Aragorn even show up? Like five chapters in? Six chapters yeah, in? Yeah. It sounds right. And he's he's just sitting. Being a creep. <laughs> it's, it's like a great entrance where he's like just sitting in the corner of the pub with his hood up sulking and brooding. Yep. yep. <laughs> and he's like picked like the one corner of the pub that has like no light in it. <laughs> And then he's also like silently judging the hobbits Mm -hmm. because later on, if I remember correctly, he like goes over to them and is like, hey, guys, um, you should probably shut up because (laughs) 
I can hear everything you're saying. And that means everyone else at this pub can hear what you've been saying. So, (laughs) and then that's when, I think that's when Frodo is like, oh no, I need to distract everyone from Pippin about to spill the beans. And then he jumps (laughs) on the table and does a song that is like three pages long. (laughs) Anyway, okay, so (laughs) these books are real silly. Yeah, no, they, they super are. Man, it's literally just Tolkien combining every single hobby he's ever had in his <laughs> life you know like songwriting poetry topography geography <laughs> horses what else is in here history you know like it's it's it, he was just like what should i focus on i have a couple interests what should i focus on for this all book? of them <laughs> exactly okay but yeah this chapter is not silly it's no it's very serious dark. And very serious and not good. So after Sam has this realization that like, oh, great, once we get there, uh, sure, like we might destroy the ring and that will be fine and dandy. But uh, we're probably going to die there. I'm probably going to die with Frodo. Um, And then he has this thought. He says, things all went wrong. Talking about Gandalf. Things all went wrong when he went down in Moria. I wish he hadn't. He would have done something. Oh, that's right. They don't even know he's alive. He- oh, wow. That's unfortunate. And I'm like, oh, my God. They don't even know nope. that Gandalf is back. Holy and cow. And he's been doing a lot. <laughs> well, that and then that's also what makes me laugh. He says, is, he's like, he would have done something. And then it's like, I mean, kind of. <laughs> Gandalf is currently like, okay, our best bet is to distract the forces of evil so that Frodo and Sam can do this. So like, sorry, Sam, you you still wouldn't have, you would have been in the exact same situation had Gandalf, you know, been there, you know, had you known that Gandalf was alive, mm-hmm. things probably still would have been the same. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Hate to break that to you, buddy. But but yeah, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe like it, you know, because that, let's see, Gandalf came, he died like three fourths of the way through Fellowship of the Ring. He came back like a third of the way into two towers. And like through all of that, Sam and Frodo are just like off on their oh shit where is it there's a meat there's like a picture of there's a like huge cruise ship in the background and then like someone in the foreground is in like a rowboat by themselves <laughs> oh and that's just like frodo and sam this entire time yeah like, just doing their own thing oblivious to what's happening beyond them and then like and the background is like <laughs> stuff with the ints and saruman and denethor and faramir and yeah and like they good lord they don't even know who dinothor is like oh my god man oh yeah 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 i don't think they would be happy if they found out that they tried to kill that he tried to kill faramir because they do know who faramir is yes at the very least perfect pure wonderful faramir (laughs) oh faramir oh my gosh he's amazing he's great um so they just like struggle through this kind of like desert wasteland volcanic uh, like yeah desert that is Mordor right now Mm -hmm. as they're on their way to Mount Doom and um they can feel the like they can all feel the power of the ring obviously Frodo it's weighing him down terribly and yeah just like the entire time impending doom hanging over them Real casual, real nice. <laughs> this this is not, this is not great. <laughs> yeah, there's. I like the little sprinkles of uh, personification for Sauron that's just kind of sprinkled around in this chapter. It just like little things about what Sauron is thinking about stuff. Mm-hmm. Just here and there. The first one in the chapter, uh, and the one I wrote down because I just like uh, I like how it is uh, how how it's put is. Talking about uh, the Dark Lord had almost completed the movement of his forces, but even in the fastness of his own realm, he sought the secrecy of night, fearing the winds of the world had turned against him, tearing aside his veils, and troubled with tidings of bold spies that had passed through his fences. Mm. I don't know if I would call Frodo and Sam bold spies. Yeah. (laughs) Not exactly, but that's okay. They're just doing their best, you know? Like... 
But I think, yeah. I think from his point of view, they would be bold just because they're there. Right. They have dared to enter yeah. his lands. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. That's true. That's a good way to, to, to look at it and think about it. It's like those old Doritos commercials. Yes, you are bold. Oh, my God. But are you also daring? What the hell? <laughs> Why is this like unlocking a memory? I know. In my brain. I'm oh my god. <laughs> Holy cow. I seem to have oh that god. effect on people. <laughs> I just remember all these random singular things. This was like what early 2000s yeah. branding, I would say. Yeah. Cuz I'm like seeing it in my head and it definitely has a 2000s aesthetic about it. It's like the, it, you the know? child snack food version of the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh but with doritos man. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah so they're just in this desert dying kind of <laughs> it's it's Not very really. sad yeah Fro- it's frodo is sad. constantly clutching at the ring mm-hmm. yeah and it's like frodo um i don't know if i like highlighted a point but like it mentions several times that um like Frodo is all hunched over and he's like not even like looking ahead at anything. At one point in the journey, he just like stops talking altogether mm-hmm. and doesn't have like any kind of strength in him to reply to Sam. And um, this is when I just like started feeling like, oh, no, it's not going to happen. Are they like, are they anywhere near? It's just going to get worse and worse. Uh, Yeah, that's like literally what it felt like for me. I was like, they're just going to keep trudging through this like wasteland and and maybe they'll get to the they'll get to Mount Doom at the end of the chapter. And I honestly, I thought I think maybe because like my brain is thinking in terms of like video games. But in my mind, they were going to get to Mount Doom and Sauron was going to be there and they were going to have to battle Sauron. (laughs) (laughs) And like, you know, somehow trick, like be able to slip past him long enough for them to like throw the ring into the volcano or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's what I thought, like for, you know, halfway through this chapter, I was like, oh, it's going to end and they're going to get to Mount Doom. And then there's going to be Sauron, like, being like, I've been expecting you because you haven't been sneaky at all. <laughs> You've been using the road. <laughs> like, you're f- <laughs> you're in the wide open. You've been leaving a trail for everyone under the sun to follow. <laughs> You've sounded off all of the alarms that we have in Mordor. (laughs) It's very obvious that you're here. So, which honestly, Sauron must be stupid then for him to like, (laughs) the fact that that's not what happens, you know, the fact that like, he's not waiting for them at Mount Doom or he doesn't come after them or, or whatever. He's very distracted. Yeah, like he is very easily distracted. What up? It's Mary Clay from the future here to say that in hindsight, as I'm editing this episode right now, I don't think I'm one to talk about getting easily distracted, considering I was literally distracted by a plant in last week's episode. Okay, moving on. He's just he's just an eye. He can only look in one direction. I mean, Aragorn's at his front door. I'd be distracted. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on out there? I mean, same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's <But> this? Like... <laughs> Man, just the, but like just the fact. So maybe like I don't know if I if this is like a a moment where it's like oh I should give Frodo and Sam more credit, or if it's like oh I should give like Sauron's just an idiot. You know, mm. did Frodo and Sam succeed in this because they were smart and <laughs> sneaky, or was it just that like Sauron wasn't on to them for some reason? I think it's, it's just lucky. I think it's a bit of both um, because Sauron is so, um, uh, I don't know, what's the word? Hubris. Like he, he, he falls because of his own hubris, right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. He doesn't, mm-hmm. um, he, he doesn't think anything can kill him or, or even get as far as they, they got, not, like much less these two little dudes that are just in yeah. his backyard. So, yeah. When really he's a being not much different than the spider he considers a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man 
She should have, she should be the one with the rings. I don't know what Sauron's doing. She should be the evil lord of everything. Right? She's a big spider. You know? Yeah. Just a giant spider. Well, I got a video game for you to play. (laughs) Is she, what, is she in like a a Lord of the Rings video game? Yeah. uh, (laughs) Yeah. When we got to Shelob in our in our coverage of the movies, we we spent a whole episode talking about Shelob's depiction in the non canonical uh, Shadow of War, which is the sequel to Shadow of Mordor, uh, which is like a RPG uh, RTS like army control game where you okay. play as a, a knight of Gondor who uh, a ranger of Gondor who died and then is resurrected by the soul of Celebrimbor, and you make your own ring of power, and Shelob is a major character that can turn into a beautiful woman and is pretty much plays the role of Galadriel in it's that story. Ridiculous. It's insane. <laughs> oh my, you can't see it, but like my eyes are like the size of, okay then. And used to be Sauron's She's, lover, I guess. It's so weird. We watched like all the cutscenes, and I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> like, There's just 40 minutes she, of cutscenes of, of, of sexy, like, sexy, dark <laughs> humanoid Shelob. Okay. I don't know whether to be like, yeah, good for her, or... <laughs> horrified <laughs> or maybe a little bit of both you know a healthy balance of i hope both. this doesn't awaken something in me <laughs> <laughs> she's what? regretting having us on her podcast again no <laughs> no i'm not oh my god that's amazing it's really silly yeah it is it's times it's times like these where i'm like what would tolkien think <laughs> If he knew what was happening with his like works of life, the the state the estate signed off on that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh wait, really? Yeah. Yeah, as far as I'm oh, aware, okay. The, the Tolkien estate signed off on those games. So that's hilarious. Okay, then. Wow, good for the good for the Tolkien. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the they Tolkien. They have to sign off on literally anything that happens with the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, probably. Well, also like. If they sign off on it, I'm sure they get a get that crap money. ton more mm-hmm. money, yeah, <laughs> than if they, like, don't give their, you know, stamp of approval or whatever, you right. know. They got a billion dollars or whatever from, or however many, hundred million, hundred billion dollars, whatever Amazon paid to make that show. Oh, that's true. It's like an absurd amount of money. Yeah. Oh, I don't right. even remember. <laughs> Some obscene Man. amount of money that Jeff Bezos won't ever miss. <laughs> uh, he can go. <laughs> himself. <laughs> This is, uh, I am a, let's all get this straight. Jeff Bezos could, Bezos can, can go. I don't even know. Whatever. He can just, he Fall doesn't deserve Fall into the cracks words. of doom. Yeah, Whatever. for real. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like a certain other bald creature we're about to read about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. Um, he was also, a, yeah, a certain other, like, greedy, blind, like, blinded by greed and power creature mm-hmm. so whatever and bald hmm. and ugly interesting is Gollum actually uh allegory for jeff Bezos? <laughs> no it, it's just applicable to him <laughs> uh i do like that there is just seemingly a single passing reference to Gollum following them like actually physically following them in this chapter mm. where sam yeah. just for a second thinks he sees eyes looking at him in the darkness and then they're gone those eyes man they're always Ugh. Gollum. Always. God. It's just always got my favorite is when other characters will talk about like, yeah, I think I saw something following me or like moving around in the darkness and they try to describe what it was. And like one character described him as like a giant black frog. <laughs> and some other character was like, Yeah, it was a squirrel <laughs> and like or like a hairless giant squirrel. <laughs> I just love hearing the descriptions from from the other like characters when they like just see Gollum in passing. So uh, at one point they eat like the last of the lame bus. Oh, which I should today I saw um, I shared in the Facebook group for that's what I'm talking about. Listeners, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, you should join it. It's very fun. I shared a there was a map that was that I saw in my timeline on Facebook and it was like showing the different like foods of the in the regions uh-huh. of middle earth yeah. and the one for like i don't know i guess like elf land rohan gondor whatever was like lame bus and then it had a little asterisk next to it and you went to the bottom and it was like oh and what's this yes more lame bus <laughs> more lame bus bread <laughs> i like uh, on that map it's uh, 
there's uh, meat ripe off the bone, and then an asterisk down at the bottom, not confirmed for Moria. <laughs> Is this a movie reference? Yes, that one's from the okay. movie. Okay. I learned, I was just recording with Tyler and Ethan, and they were they were talking about the meats back on the menu, boys. Yep. yep. And talking about, like, how do orcs know what a menu is? <laughs> you know? We had like, that talk, yeah. <laughs> so, and I was like, oh, great. I can't wait to get it's to that. It's not even specifically so. orcs. It's how do the uruk know? <laughs> It's like even That's more specifically. True, yeah. Saruman's a fancy dude. Right? You're a month old. How do you know what a restaurant is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Because the uruk are the, oh, I forgot about that. They're like the gross, like, mutation mm-hmm. yeah. orcs, aren't they? Mm, yum. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, great. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> You're welcome. Whoops. Um. So they eat some of this lame bus that they've had for 20 gazillion years. <laughs> like six months or something. Yeah, like honestly. And it like gives just enough like strength and hope in them to like move onward mm-hmm. for to to finish this journey. At one point, Frodo is just not doing good. And Sam asks him, he's like, I I can see that you're very tired. How about I carry the ring for a bit? And immediately he's like, oh, that wasn't a good idea to say. <laughs> for, uh, it says, a wild light came into Frodo's eyes. Stand away. Do not touch me, he cried. It is mine, I say. Be off. And then he kind of like stops for a second. And then he's like, oh, oh, wait, crap. Ah, uh, no. Um, he says, it is my burden and no one else can bear it. It is too late now, Sam, dear. You can't help me in that way again. I'm almost in its power now. I could not give it up. And if you tried to take it, I should go mad. Ooh, this isn't good. And this is when I was like, oh, this isn't good. This isn't. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, not that like any part of this has been good so far, you know, but like. Mm -hmm. This in particular is not good. The part, especially when he says, I am almost in its power now. I was like, oh, yikes. Yikes. <laughs> That's not good. Frodo's about to be just totally, completely at its, at the like power and will of the ring. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this is when I was just like, I don't think the ring is going to be destroyed if it gets, I mean, like part of my brain, I was like, obviously it has to get destroyed. This is like, it's not going to, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I say all that, but like it could have been a completely meaningless, pointless, a thousand page book where the ring doesn't get destroyed. <laughs> no, Ar- Aragorn's just going to run Sauron through the heart with a sword. It's it's easy, right? What? And Sauron <laughs> wins. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But like it, uh, I was just like, I can't imagine how it's going to, how the ring is going to get to a point where he will destroy it because mm-hmm. he's so overtaken by its power now. I was like, that's not going to go over well <laughs> when we get to Mount Doom. Um, and it doesn't, to say the least. Um, <laughs> then they stop for a bit to uh, take off some of their gear and and like get rid of anything that's physically weighing them down because the weight of the ring is mentally weighing them down and they can't just throw that away. So... Mm-hmm. Um, they take some time and get rid of basically everything that they are able to. And Sam has to like painstakingly go through his backpack and be like, oh my God, I spent so much time packing this when we were in Rivendell. And I, he's basically like a doomsday prepper and he had like (laughs) everything, everything he could ever need. And he was like, I can't believe I have to dump all this out. Hardest of all, it was to part with his cooking gear, it says. That's relatable. <laughs> right? The clatter of his precious pans I know. as they fell down into the dark was like a death oh knell to his heart. R.I.P. pants. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're throwing out some nice, like, in cast That's cast iron. iron. Like, yeah. Sad times. I was going to say, has sad he times. been, but has he been traveling with the cast iron skill? Because that's heavy, you know? Well, that's how like, he was strong enough to stab Shelob. <laughs> <laughs> He's just carrying around 150 just pounds of lifting, cast iron all the time. <laughs> lifting cast iron skillets in the gym. like <laughs> Sam could probably bend a cast iron <sighs> skillet in half. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We underestimate his strength, really. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just, yeah, moments like these where it's like, uh, 
What a hobbit. Well, I mean, starving and <laughs> like, half dead, he carries Frodo up a mountain, so. That's true. Uh, yeah, it's all that, sh- yeah, those pots and pans, man. Yeah. I feel so strength. light He's now. been training for this moment, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he literally, cr- he lit- yeah, tears welled in his eyes at the thought of casting it away. And then he says, do you remember that bit of rabbit, Mr. Frodo, he said, and our place under the warm bank in Captain Faramir's country, the day I saw an Oliphant? And this is when, I don't know if you guys can relate, but it's a similar experience to what I'm experiencing now, where I'm having like a weird nostalgia for like April. <laughs> when when like in april we were like we had this hope that maybe this will be over in a couple weeks by now and like yeah. me and like oh it looks like everyone is handling this and reacting to this appropriately for the most part and all we were doing was making bread and playing <laughs> animal crossing and doing puzzles and and there was like every other day there was someone doing like a like drive by car parade for someone's birthday mm-hmm. or like a graduation or whatever and and like that's all we had to worry about whereas now we are in the in the US we are in the midst of like a second uh civil rights movement which is you know very necessary and needed mm-hmm. but it's still you know hard and difficult to to experience and witness and like feel that pain and then it's also incredibly frustrating to to witness and be like oh my god how can some people be so dense right and and then we also are like we're we're back at our coronavirus numbers that we had in March and April when things started shutting down and instead everyone's like, oh, what's that phase three you say of reopening? Sounds good. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's safe to go to restaurants now. And I'm like, no, it's not. No, Absolutely it's not. not. Maybe where <laughs> like, we live. But. Like, no. It, and they're talking about like opening up schools mm-hmm. and Mm-mm. and like maybe the reason that children are less susceptible is because we They've closed, been closed the schools. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like freaking our secretary of education knows nothing about education. Right. Real and, world like, Dolores Umbridge. <laughs> literally. God. And and then we have a thing called a presidential election coming up in November. <laughs> and like I find myself in these times thinking back to April when all we were doing is is being like, oh, isn't that cute? These people in Italy had a, a balcony concert and this guy took out his val- violin and did a concert and everyone in this apartment complex in Italy like joined in and they all sang and what a beautiful moment. Mm-hmm. And oh, I better go get my bread. It's time for <laughs> um, a second proving. And oh, I found the last puzzle piece. Oh, look at this completed puzzle. What a great, you know. Oh, I've spent 900 hours on Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, so Sam has the similar feeling where he's thinking back and he's like, oh, wasn't that like, that was such a nice time when we were sitting in the middle of this forest by ourselves away from our friends. We thought everyone was, this was also in a time. Oh, I'm pretty sure they still think everyone's dead. Yeah. They're all pretty sure that everyone's dead, basically. <laughs> also, like, including, like, Aragorn and Legolas and everyone. Also, Sam is talking about literally like, two weeks ago. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Which is, yeah, which is where, like, I have nostalgia for three months ago. Mm-hmm. It you feels know, like, nostalgia. It feels like five years ago, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, someone yeah. said I was talking about the I was talking about the finale of The Good Place and I and someone was like, "Oh, I haven't I haven't watched the last season." And I was like, "Oh, it should be on Netflix." And he's like, "No, that doesn't usually happen to like a year after." And I was like, "It has been a year." <laughs> it, it, like The Good Place ended. I was like, "No, that was last year. The Good Place ended last year." No, it ended this February yeah. in 2020. <laughs> And I had like a breakdown. I was like, what do you mean? Oh my God. <laughs> so, anyway, I feel okay. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Sam, I can like deeply relate to Sam in this moment. It, like, all that being said is, is, is what my point is, is like, that's how, like, you know how dark it is when you're, f- you're thinking back fondly on a time that was like, up until that moment, it was probably like the, like, lowest you've ever felt you know mm-hmm. and you're like oh my god this is hopeless blah, blah. and then 
like two weeks from now in the future, Sam is like, oh, just you wait, buddy boy. You don't know how good you had right? it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So Frodo and Frodo replies and says that uh, he doesn't remember. He says, at least I know I know that such things happened, but I cannot see them. No taste of food, no feel of water, no sound of wind, no memory of tree or grass or flower, no image of moon or star are left to me. And all he sees is, um, let's see, there is no veil between me and the wheel of fire. I begin to see it even with my waking eyes and all else fades. So, again, they're not in a great place right now. No. <laughs> Physically and mentally. And that's where we're going to leave this episode. That's right. Do you really think that I would have made Mount Doom just one hour? Are you kidding me? This chap, it's where it all happens, y'all. This is where it goes down. And I had a lot of feelings and thoughts to go through. And I didn't know how to do this justice. So I made Cassandra and Norman stay on for two hours so we could talk about it all. Okay. So this is part one. And next week will be part two. And oh my God, it's all amazing and great. And I'm like literally lightheaded as I'm talking right now telling you this. This was a great chapter. I didn't know how to do it all justice. And if you liked Cassandra and Norman, make sure to go check out their podcast, Lord of the Rings Minute, where they are covering the Lord of the Rings movies minute by minute. They are currently in Return of the King. Uh, They are on the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, so a little bit behind where I am. But they're obviously fun people because I forced them to stay on and talk for two hours about this chapter. So go check them out. That's What I'm Talking About is a proud member of WBNE. You can learn more about the network by going to WBNE.org, where you can find other shows on the network, such as Hello From Elsewhere. Hello From Elsewhere. That's the name of our podcast. I'm Casey. And I'm Valerie. On our podcast, we dive deep into the characters and themes behind your favorite movies and books, all through a positive lens. We explore all your biggest pop culture questions, both thoughtful and silly, like what is the symbolism of magical portals in fantasy stories? What would happen if Princess Anna went on a date with Kermit the Frog? And what does the name Kylo Ren mean anyway? Hint, it has something to do with flowers. Isn't that so cute? If it's pop culture, we're interested in exploring the meaning behind it. So come journey through Elsewhere with us, wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, did you know someone once used the word jovial to describe Hello from Elsewhere? Did you know someone once described our podcast as better than a Wookiee hug? That is literally the nicest thing anyone has ever said. The cover is by Graphite, a.k.a. Vaishan Brandon. You can support him on Instagram at graphite.vmb. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Tolkien About Pod. You can find me on Twitter at MC Watts Up and Instagram at MC Turn Down for What. You can also support the podcast by going to patreon.com slash Tolkien About Pod, where you can find access to fun perks in different tiers, like access to our Discord community, where you can talk to me as well as other hosts on the WBE network and also hang out and chat with the rest of the amazing people in our community because they're amazing and cool. Um, you can also be a sponsor of the podcast, like Johan. Johan is this week's sponsor. Thank you so much, Johan, for your continued support of the podcast. I appreciate it so much. And until next week, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs>